Hi, so this is part two of a video that dealt with looking at a quadratic equation um, in a area of a trapezium and being asked to prove that the area of the trapezium was the same as this quadratic equation. Okay, um, I mentioned at the end of the previous video, and if you're not sure about this, then maybe if you get the opportunity to have a look, and I will put a link through on this video, and you'll be able to go back to the previous one, and it'll be on the playlist as well. Okay, if you're not sure about that, maybe have a look at that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is address part B of this particular question, which is to show um, the shortest side, or to... Actually, I'm not sure it was the shortest. Was it shortest? Yeah, shortest side, okay, which is the shortest side of this particular uh, trapezium. Okay, well, the information that we're given is this. So basically, what you'll need to be able to do with this is factorise it and work out the values of x. And that will then give you the ability to solve um, and look at each of these. I know it seems obvious that x plus 6 is probably going to be the longest side, but I guess we need to prove that really. Uh, the shortest side will probably be, it'll be one of those. It'll be either x minus 5 or x plus 2. Okay, um, so let's have a look at this as an equation that we need to factorise first. And it does happen quite a lot with these type of questions that you end up factorising uh, quadratic. So you need to be fairly familiar with how to do that. And this is pitched really at round about A, A star type questions. Okay, well, the, what I look at is that if we've got minus 56 there, we need two numbers that when we multiply them together will make minus 56, and when we add them together, we'll make minus x. Now, there's a couple of different methods of doing that. You could use quadratic formula, you could use the cross method. Um, however, I'm just going to use trial and error on this particular one because the only two factors of 56 that when you multiply them together will make 56, and when you add them together will make 1 or, or x, is going to be 7 and 8. Okay, so if I've got 7 and 8, when I add them together, or when I multiply them together, one of them needs to be a negative number. Okay, because if it's minus 7, a minus times a positive is going to be a minus. Well, that's fine. That multiplied together will make minus 56. Okay, the problem with it is that I've got minus 7 plus 8 will not make minus 1. It's going to make positive 1. So actually, this is the wrong way around. It's going to be, in answer to the, uh, the factorization, minus, oops, sorry, <laughs> minus 7. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's going to be plus 7 and minus 8. Okay, all right, plus 7 and minus 8 because... When you multiply a positive and a negative together, you get a negative. So 7 times 8 is 56. Negative 56 is fine. Um, when you add them together, I've got 7 plus negative 8. Well, 7 plus negative 8 is the same as saying 7 minus 8. So 7 minus 8 is minus x or minus 1. So that's going to work for me. Okay, if you've not quite followed that and the line of thinking, then maybe do have a look at the playlist on factorization. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop these numbers into here, and I've got x plus 7 and x minus 8. And just to prove it, I'm just going to very, very quickly prove it. I've got x times x is x squared. x times minus 8 is minus 8x plus 7x and then minus 56. So that works perfectly well for me and I'm fairly sure that's correct. I'm also fairly sure that um, these two multiplied together equal zero because it tells us there. Okay, so what we've got to do now is work out the values of x. Well, if this plus this as a term is going to be 1, then effectively I've got x minus 8 equals x. And if this and this are a term 1, then I've got x plus 7 equals 0. 
Okay, so uh, again, you might want to just uh, stop the video, have a little look at that. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about what I've done with that. Okay, but it allows me then to solve for x. So in effect, I've got two values of x, which I would have because it's a quadratic equation. And in this particular case, it crosses the x-axis at two values. The first value it crosses at is when x equals 8, because I've got to add 8 to both sides and I get x equals 8. And then also x equals minus 7. So in other words, this particular quadratic will look something like that, where that's minus 7 and this is positive 8. Okay, now again, that might be a little bit tricky to follow, and I do appreciate that, but these are really higher level questions. And as I mentioned before, you need to be familiar with how these things work. Okay, so I've got a value of x is 8 and a value of x is minus 7. Well, I can't use minus 7, it's a negative number, it's not going to work in there. Okay, so I've got x being 8. So in other words, I've got three dimensions here. I've got x plus 6, which is going to be 14. <laughs> I've got x minus 5, which is going to be 3. And I've got x plus 2, which is going to be 10. So actually, the shortest side of this particular uh, trapezium is going to be when x is minus 5, because the actual value of it would be um, 8 minus 5, which equals 3. So this is the shortest side, is x minus 5. Okay, uh, that's taken a little bit of time to go through. Um, I will post some more examples of these types of questions on the playlist. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, please do add a comment below. Please like, uh, subscribe to the site, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.